Hello and welcome to another video and today we've got a 2016 Ford Galaxy with an automatic gearbox that's got a loss of drive. So let's get it in and let's get it fixed. Okay so as always you know the score by now, I've got the engine running as you can see, ticking over a little bit too fast, I've got the engine management light on, it's telling us the boot, uh, sorry the bonnet is open, 38 miles left to empty, just let it cycle through all that, once an oil change and I think the next one we're going to get the transmission fault codes, battery low in the key, vehicle is on and running, it's going to prove me a liar now. <laughs> They, never, they always say never work with children and animals. Obviously don't want to work with cars either. Anyway, usually it does come up with transmission malfunction. So, we're ticking over too high. We're in park. Pop it into reverse. Reverse camera works. It's showing reverse on the dashboard. If I take my foot off the brake, we're not moving anywhere. Same with drive, put it into drive, go forward, and we've got absolutely bugger all. So let's go get some fault codes, let's see what we've got, and let's see if we can get some uh, direction. There we go, there's the warnings on the dashboard, just to prove I'm not lying. Right, so for ease of use, um, not that it's any better than IDS, so I'm endorsed by them, I'm not, but I'm using Forescan. So we're going through a um, global scan at the moment. As you can see, there's plenty of fault codes stored in various modules. Straight away in the transmission module, we've got a pressure control solenoid control circuit low. Uh, control module communication bus A off. We've also got uh, PO... I can't read that. PO62, I think it is, system voltage low. Internal control module monitoring processor performance and then we've got an actuator supply voltage A circuit possibly open Actuator supply voltage B circuit open and then we've got actuator supply voltage C circuit open Then into the powertrain control module We've got transmission torque reduction request uh, We've got a fault code there saying that the Transmission control system mill request is active. We've got lost communication with the transmission control module, that's an interesting one. We've also got internal control module torque calculation performance and internal control module torque calculation performance again. Park assist module, we've also got lost communication with the transmission module. So we've got a few fault codes there to be going with. Let's have a look at this little bit of live data now. So we're just going to uh, go to the transmission control module and just look at some voltages because we've got some voltage problems there. The rest of the data is really only valid if the control, uh, sorry, if the gearbox is actually working, which it isn't. So let's get it up. So we've got fluid temperature of 27 degrees and the control module voltage is there anywhere between 13.25 and 13.5 okay. okay so in the words of haircut 100 i'm showing my age now where do we go from here well we've got a few fault codes for um solenoid voltages high and low we've also got control module internal performance and a couple of um, modules reporting no communication with the transmission control module so as there is no information on ETIS, the workshop information system regarding any of these fault codes or any direction, I think where I'm going to go next is to disconnect the transmission control module and check the powers, grounds and the cans signals um, at the plug itself and get the wiring diagram up and see where we need to be on the plug. So let's get the wiring diagram up, let's have a quick look at that, then let's get the module plug disconnected and let's check to test some feeds, some grounds and some CAN signals. Okay, so here's the wiring diagram and we've got a permanent feed here, which is coming from a fuse in the battery junction box. Uh, we've also got an ignition live, which is here, also via a fuse on the battery junction box. We've got two CAN bus wires, obviously CAN high and CAN low. 
and we've also got a single ground wire. Right, so we pulled the wiring diagram up and we can see here that we've got pin 2 and 5 are our CAN bus wires, pin 6 and 11 are fused feeds and pin 19 is a ground. So not a great deal there to look at. And the connector plug itself, I just zoom out a little bit, give it some reference. So there's your air box and the connector is that round connector in the middle of the screen. So let me just pop the camera down, get the camera on the tripod, get it connected, uh, disconnected, and let's do some further testing. Right, so I've got this rigged up the best way I can for you. Um, you don't need to see me going into the connectors itself. Just concentrate on the screen. So I've got it connected to a good ground. Do a battery reference check. So I've got 13.6, I have got it on support. So the first wire I'm going to check is my CAN bus wire, which is uh, pin 2. So that's CAN low, 2.3. Yep, I should be using a scope, but it gives me a ballpark figure. So I'm happy with that. And pin 5, 2.9. So for the moment, I'm pretty much happy with the CAN uh, voltages. So the next one I'm going to go to is pin 6, which is our fused feed from fuse 76. And that should be this one here. So we've got battery voltage there. And then to pin 11, which is coming from fuse 21. And that is that one there, that's battery voltage. Then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to swap the multimeter around, so I'm going to put the negative onto the battery positive, and I'm going to go onto pin 19, which is the ground, use the meter in reverse, and that's testing the ground. So, everything appears okay there, however, always wise to uh, load test the wires, after all, this, this would basically now on a manufacturer's test plan have us fitting a new transmission control module. So this is why the title of the video is when 12 volts isn't 12 volts. So let me just go get my 21 watt bulb and let's load test these wires and let's see what we get then. Okay, so I've got a 21 watt bulb just connected to again to the good ground. I'm gonna go into pin 11 first. Ignition is on, so as you can see, we've got a nice bright light there. So I'm low testing that. I can satisfy now that that's a decent supply. And now I'm going to go into pin six. Now, bear in mind, we had battery voltage on this. And as you can see there, look, we're just starting to glow. So that's showing me that we've got a, a resistance in that cable. As you can see, hopefully on the camera, it is going up and down on its voltages. So we've got an issue there on pin six. Let me just swap the leads over, go onto battery positive and testing the ground. So we've got a good ground there. So that just goes to show that when you've got 12 volts using a meter, it's not putting the circuit under any load whatsoever, any resistance in there, and it's not going to um, show it up at all put a bulb across there or even a volt drop test actually i'll do a volt drop test next for you put it under load and you see there that you've got a volt drop so let me just go get my meter and let's see what the volt drop actually is in all fairness um, i can't do a volt drop test because obviously the connector needs to be connected up to do a, a proper volt drop test because it needs to be under load and i can't get my back probes um, into the back of the connector at all whilst the connector is plugged in because the wires go too deep into the plug so unfortunately I can't show you as a volt drop test what the actual voltage actually is but um, yeah so um, yeah we so we need to uh, start looking back into the wiring diagram I think there's a multi plug between that multi plug and the power source which I think is a battery junction box so yeah, let's have a look at the wiring diagram again, and let's start stripping. What I can do, guys, actually, thinking about it, 
I've got the test light back in there again, so now we've just show you. So the bulb is lit dimly. I've got the multimeter, and I'm just going to use my multimeter cables now to go onto the connector. So I'm connected to the connector, pin six, and battery positive. And as you can see there, we've got a volt drop of around about 3.7 volts, nearly nearly four volts. So if I just swap the negative to the a good ground. There we go. So we've got nine volts at the TCM power supply. So that's showing you how to do a volt drop. We need to carry on now with some wiring tests and checks. Okay, so whilst I'm getting permission to go any further with, di with this diagnostics, I'm just doing a quick software update as part of its uh, warranty recalls, a desulfurization update on the PCM. The connector C1019 is just showing it's in this general area. Now it doesn't say if it's under the airbox or whether it's under the arch liner or not. So what I'm going to do is just take the uh, airbox out, have a quick look around. It's quite a big connector. Hopefully we'll see it there. If not, it might mean taking the arch liner out or the um, under tray and going underneath the vehicle. So let's get the airbox out for what it takes. Right, so as you can see, I've got the airbox out and it's not looking like we've got the big multi-plug that we're after in this general area. So I'm gonna have to put the vehicle up. I'll whip the under tray off first, see if I can see it there, up near the uh, fog light area possibly. It's gonna be the arch liner out. Um, noisy get working next door to me, banging away, trying to split a ball joint. Right, so we've got the vehicle up in the air. I've got the under tray off. That exposes the Ford power shift gearbox in all its glory. Yep, being sarcastic. And that here, there, is the harness going to it. And hopefully you can see, tucked away, so I'm gonna to have to take the arch liner out. There is the multi-plug that I'm looking for. It's a 34 pin multi-plug. So let me take the wheel off, let me get the arch liner off. Right, so as you can see guys, arch liner is out. There's the end casing of the gearbox. And that, I'm rather hoping, is the C1019 connector block. So I'm just gonna have a quick look at the connectors themselves before I part it. Um, it's got the old Frankenstein clamp, as I call it, the old power latch. And then we'll have a look at the feeds either side of it. See if we can see any issues. Okay, so I'm back probed into the bottom of the connector, the part that goes to the gearbox. I've got the red going to the multimeter and the black of the multimeter going via an extension cable all the way up to the battery negative. And just as before, we've got 12.1 volts. Um, I've just took it off the battery support at the moment. Like I said before, we're not under any load at the moment. So this is the supply that's hot at all times, permanent live. So what I'm gonna do next, I'm just gonna pop the bulb in there and let's see what we've got there. So now I've got the bulb connected to the top of the multi-plug. That's the feed in from the fuse. Just as a reference there, you can see that the bulb is nice and bright. So I'm just gonna pop the camera down and we're gonna put it into the bottom of the connector. Let's see what we've got there. Okay, so we're in the bottom of the connector now, onto a good ground. And as you can see, the bulb isn't lit at all. So let's just pull this out, give the wire a bit of a tug, and look at that. Comes straight out in my hand. So there guys, that's our issue. So let's get this disconnected, get it deep in, and let's see if we can get a repair on this. Noisy bugger. Okay, so looking at the plug itself, um, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get in there to deep in this. So I've just spoken to the customer, giving them a couple of options, either a new harness or 
I can chop this wire here, chop the corresponding wire on this multi-plug, bypass the multi-plug, and that should do a, a decent enough fix. Put a, a weatherproof seal on it, and job should be a good one. At the end of the day, the customer's paying the bill, so we have to do what he wants. Okay, so I've just done a waterproof joint. I've bypassed the connector block there, as you can see, and also put a bit of heat shrink there on the cut wire um, of the existing wire that goes into the top of the multi-plug. Put a thin smearing of electrical grease on the contact surfaces there. So what I'm just gonna do now is gonna tidy that up, put a bit of tape around it, build it back up, uh, and then we'll go check at the gearbox and see if we've got a fix here. Okay, so the wire's repaired. Uh, still got to make sure everything's tidy under there before we hand it back. And I'm just loosely in the front of the connector, not causing any damage because the hole is bigger than what the pin is. And we're onto a good ground there, we're on the engine ground. This is the permanent life, so I don't need the ignition on. And my bulb is lit nice and brightly. So, as they say, it's not over till the fat lady sings, but I can hear a woman a voice up. So I'm just going to uh, put the airbox back in, connect the air mass meter. We're going to start the car up and let's see if we've got any a transmission. So just for ease and speed, I'm going to use four scan. So I'm just going to power it up, let it do its read. Obviously all the fault codes are still going to be there. So I'm just going to delete the fault codes then I'm going to hop in the car, see if we've got the drive that we didn't have beforehand um, and see if any fault codes have come back. So, let's just go and delete them. Just going to go and turn the ignition off and then back on again. Okay. So we've just got one fault code in the sync module, external memory card. I'm not bothered about that, that's just for the sat nav. So perfect there, no fault codes in the transmission or in the powertrain. So let's start it up and let's see what we've got. This is up. Okay, so the fat lady's been warming her tonsils up, so the proof is in the pudding now. I've built it all back up, got the wheel arch liner on, under tray back on, and the wheel back on. So we'll pop the ignition back on for you, start her up, let's see if we get any warnings, nothing coming up there, oil change which we knew about, okay so let's slip it into reverse, I've already felt it clonk into gear and just to prove I'm moving backwards put it into drive and moving forwards so I'm going to call that a fix but the acid test is a road test so let's give it a road test but just before we go for the road test let's just rescan it see if there's any fault codes stored in the gearbox as you can see there no fault codes whatsoever so I'm pretty confident now I can go for a road test wrap it up call it a fix So guys, I've got the camera balanced on the top of the dashboard, so I'll wrap this up before the camera falls over. So, I'll call that a fix. Um, please like, please share, please subscribe if you already haven't. That's the lifeblood of this channel. And until next time, thanks guys. Cheers for watching. See ya.